And joining us now, the Russia editor for The Economist, Arkady Ostrovsky. He's also the host of the critically acclaimed podcast, Next Year in Moscow. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. There's so much to talk about in terms of this election, if that's what you want to call it. It doesn't really seem like one to me. I don't. Um, yeah, I, I don't see it that way. Um, you say it should be a wake-up call to the West. Um, and let me just add on a few other things you say. Um, sanctions are not enough. Tell us why. Um, and that the West needs to show the world that Putin is the enemy. Um, I think the world knows that, at least part of it. But how do, how do we go further with that message? Uh, yes, thank you for having me. Yeah, I wouldn't call this election because uh, elections are just choice and there was clearly uh, no choice. Um, this is a, a different kind of procedure. It's an acclamation, um, a kind of a ritual greeting. Uh, and the fact that Putin has awarded himself 88% is actually significant because it moves him to a different level of dictatorship inside the country and a different level of threat, therefore, outside the country, because the two things are very, very closely connected. It's a war which started inside Russia. It was started to crash any seeds of sort of modernization and democracy that were threatening to Putin. He was threatened not by NATO militarily, but by idea of NATO being an alliance that defends uh, individual liberty and the rule of law. It was that kind of expansion that was threatening Putin's rule. And that's why he lashed out uh, against Ukraine. I mean, he's not just fighting against Ukraine. He's fighting in Ukraine against the West and against his own people. And the longer, you know, now that he's awarded himself that 80, 80%, he is more dangerous. I think it is a new threshold. And I think he's feeling, um, he's feeling emboldened uh, by this. Um, I think, you know, sanctions are not going to, on themselves, uh, work. I mean, they, you know, applying sanctions and Putin's elite probably is, you know, is the right thing. But for as long as um, sanctions fail, and they have failed to really cut uh, Russia's sources of financing from oil and gas, they're not going to be that effective. I think the new, uh, I mean, what I'm trying to argue in that lead article and my other coverage and in this podcast, which you, you, you were kind to mention, is that um, the world kind of need to understand that the, the what's happening domestically is connected to that aggression. And therefore, to win the war against Putin's regime, and it is evil regime. There is no two ways about it. It is kind of, he is trying to change the way you and I live. He is trying to change the conditions on which Western institutions are built. But to win that war, you can only win it in alliance with people inside Russia who are standing up to him, who are resisting him, those who queue despite all the threats and intimidation at midday, uh, noon against Putin, that action which Alexei Navalny has called for. Uh, Navalny, before he died on CNN, I think, in a film on CNN, said, you know, if he kills me, that means we are unusually strong. Um, I think Putin knows that he killed Navalny because Navalny represented that idea of a modern, um, modern, different kind of a non-aggressive Russia, which clearly undermined his idea of Russia as an empire and his own kleptocratic rule. So let's talk a little further about the future of dissent in Russia. You just mentioned the protests on Sunday that drew some impressive numbers to a number of polling places. And it should be noted the bravery of those who, who did so. And we wonder what will happen uh, to some of them. But this is Putin has uh, tightened his grip on power in the last year or so. It feels like a lot longer than that, than Prigozhin was a few hundred miles from Moscow and Putin seemed threatened. That's no longer the case. Do you think he's now emboldened to crack down even harder on those who dare stand up against him. Absolutely. I, I think he is. Uh, he is already in his first uh, appearance on, on television immediately after uh, this acclamation procedure has basically said that the uh, traitors inside the country will be treated in the same way as enemies on the battlefield. Uh, there is talk of restoring death penalty. There are three new uh, large prison camps, gulag camps are being built inside Russia. Um, he is now stepping up 
again, that repression to the level that we've seen not just in Belarus, but in uh, Central Asia, uh, in places like Iraq. Uh, I think this is the man who uh, has nothing to lose now. He feels he's fighting for his own existence, for for the existence of his regime, and he will not hesitate to use uh, live munition against his own people. Now, this is the bad news. Um, the uh, and I, I'm not sure there is that much good news, but in a sense, what this protest has also revealed, uh, and I think this is worth really worth noting, is that it showed enormous demand for change and it showed that basically far from uh you know by you know into putin's idea that russians are behind him what we're seeing here is this enormous pent-up uh resentment of putin and i for one do not really subscribe to the idea that this regime uh can survive Vladimir Putin. I think one he, once he goes, I think we will see a very different dynamic as we've seen after the death of Stalin, uh, or as we've seen, and you know, um, just to remind you, Saddam Hussein, of course, was elected uh, with 100% vote not long before he was overthrown. Hmm. Russia editor for The Economist, Arkady Ostrovsky, thank you uh, for coming on the show. Please come back soon. There's just so much to talk about. We appreciate it.